big rumors over the last couple of days. And this is not, this is rumors coming from fan bases over the last couple of days. And there's something to be said about this. So I'll, obviously Alvin Brooks, the third at the end of last week, Baylor's co-associate head coach last year takes the same job associate head coach alone at Kentucky on Mark Pope's staff. And between Brooks and obviously John Jacobs, who left the staff earlier in the off season, there has been a lot of talk of our guys going to follow them because these are the two main recruiters. Alvin Brooks, the third has brought in some of the best players in the country. The last couple of years, Keontae George, Jacoby Walter and VJ Edgecombe the number three prospect in the 2024 class, arguably the best recruit Baylor has ever gotten, recruited by Alvin Brooks. And the two teams he turned down, two programs he turned down to say yes to Baylor, were Duke and, you guessed it, Kentucky. So that's 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 tough, man. Like, that's... the, 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 The red flags have to be raised there. But... I know Kentucky fans are really excited about potentially getting another crack at VJ Edgecombe. I'm here to tell you that's not going to happen. VJ Edgecombe is going to play for Baylor next year. And there's a couple of reasons why I'm confident in that. First one comes from Friday's show with Ted Emmerich. If you haven't listened to it, it is a great listen. He gives you a full rundown on VJ and Rob Wright, how they're going to fit into this program. And one thing he said, he was the play by play guy when VJ made that commitment live on ESPN at the Hoop Hall Classic back a couple months ago. And he said he was talking to VJ before, and VJ told him he was ready to make the decision to come to Baylor right after his visit. He, he It was a couple months later, obviously, that he made it official, but he was like, I was sold right then and there. He was sold on Scott Drew, and he was sold on the program, not only for what it could do for him as a, as a player, but for him as a person, which are all the buzzwords we'd love to hear, right? And then he does things that back it up, right? Obviously, I mean, Baylor has been a great guard producer the last couple of years. And you also hear these stories about VJ donating his NIL money to his school in the Bahamas where he started out. And, you know, the fact that he moved to the U.S. when he was 14 in order to get a college scholarship, went out into the wild blue yonder, went off on his own to an unknown place so that he can provide for his family down the line and get a free ride to go to college. And so that tells me this is more than basketball for VJ. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean, oh, you know, Baylor's the only place that's doing good things. Of course not. But it means it's more than basketball. And what is the one thing that Kentucky and Duke could beat Baylor in 10 times out of 10? Basketball pedigree, right? the history, the the tradition. Baylor doesn't have that yet. It's got a pretty good thing going right now, I'll tell you that. And it's got a national championship, which is what we care about, but it doesn't have all those things. So if you took a sports nerd that was also pretty good at basketball and gave them those three schools, chances are they're probably picking Duke or Kentucky. But when it's not just about basketball for you, and it's about family, and it's about serving, then Baylor has an upper hand. And again, Ted was very adamant about that. He, VJ fell in love with all of it. I'm sure he loved being guided by Alvin Brooks III, of course, but it was all of it, okay? That's the first thing. The second thing, as I look at it from the coach's point of view, okay? Scott Drew has the best active, or the best coaching tree of any active head coach in college basketball right now, right? He does. He's got. He's got guys in the Big 12, obviously, with McCaslin and Tang and John Jacobs. And now Alvin Brooks, the second man at one of the top programs. Uh, Paul Mills as well. Matthew Driscoll at North Florida. He's a Baylor guy. And through all of that, do you know how many, how many times a coach left Scott Drew's staff and took players with him to his next stop? I'll give you a minute here. Yeah. Make sure PEMDAS, carry the one. Yep, yep. Oh, yeah, it's zero. Not a single one. That has never happened. It wasn't until, like, the transfer portal became a thing that Scott Drew had, like, his second guy ever transfer out of the program. So it does not happen. Guys don't want to leave Baylor, and former Baylor coaches don't want to raid their old cabinets. They don't do it. 
And you look at Kentucky, I mean, a lot of people thought, oh, here come a bunch of BYU Cougars to come here to play for UK. That hadn't been the case either. So it might not be Mark Pope's MO either. I might be wrong. I might be naive on this, but I don't think Alvin Brooks, as soon as he got the job, was banging down the door in Long Island to try and get VJ Edgecombe to, to come aboard with him. Don't think that was the case. And I am pretty, I'm pretty confident in this one. You know, you, you tried taking the head coach. You did get the assistant coach. It was a good win. But I don't think you're getting the star player, too. And VJ is going to be, obviously, a humongous piece. Humongous piece of what Baylor is trying to do next year. And obviously, can't wait for it. Everyone just says the explosiveness. You know, think Russell Westbrook-type explosiveness. I'm not saying he could be an NBA Hall of Famer, but that's the kind of dude we're talking about. Um, and that is, that is fan, a fantastic, fantastic spot and, and give credit to Scott Drew and his staff over the last couple of years, you know, VJ Edgecombe famously picked Baylor over Duke and Kentucky. Sure. But these other guys they brought in, they had options. You know, I'm, I'm talking about a Keontae George. I'm, I'm talking about a, uh, Jacoby Walter and Eve Meese, a Kendall Brown. And going even farther back with an Isaiah Austin. These guys had options. Ones that had more banners, more fans in the stands than Baylor. More Final Fours, more Elite Eights, all of that stuff. Flashier uniforms, more guys in the pros. But those guys stuck with Baylor. And Scott Drew has clearly... I mean... This is no surprise. He's built something. This is this is not foreign to any one of us. But he has built something that transcends just the basketball in, in the recruiting annals. And that might sound confusing, but that is super impressive that he is able to recruit one-and-done guys to a program like Baylor. Because, again, so much of that sell for these guys who are also looking at Duke, North Carolina, Kentucky, Kansas, Gonzaga even... UConn, these kind of blue blood programs that Baylor is able to still get them to come here, even that even though they know they're playing for one year. You know, it, and it's just not always about how many championships you've won in the past or how many top 10 guys you've had in the past. Baylor can offer you a chance at a championship now and a chance at being a lottery pick now. And the relationships, because that's always what we hear, the relationships go deeper than that. And I think VJ Edgecombe has developed a relationship, not just with Alvin Brooks, not just with John Jacobs, but with the program as a whole, with Scott Drew, with some of the other guys on the bench, with some of the other guys coming in. And I think for sure we will see VJ Edgecombe playing at Baylor next year. Kentucky will have plenty of other good players. So I know you won't, but don't shed a tear for them. I think they'll be okay. But VJ Edgecombe, you will be watching him playing for the Baylor Bears in late 2024 and into 2025. And it will be beautiful. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. We really appreciate that. And if you want to keep up to date on all the Baylor sports news, be sure to give us a like and ring the notification bell because we are your first listen today and every day. We are your exclusive home for nothing but Baylor sports content five days a week that's not coming straight from the university. Be sure to follow us here on YouTube and also wherever you get your podcasts and on Twitter as well at Locked on Baylor. Thanks so much again. Have a good one and sick of